Ah, perfetto. Regia qui Margherita, quando mi dai l'ok okay, partiamo. Good morning everyone, we are here today for uh, this last talk uh, in our room, uh, in training room Pizza Margherita, and we are with uh, Federico Franguelli. Hi Federico. Hello. Hello. Allora, I ask uh, before starting with the actual lesson if you can uh, have uh, some little forward with us, uh, telling who we are, uh, who do you work for, do not fear advertise your company, we are okay with that. Okay. And of course, uh, why did you choose Python uh, to bring this training to us? Yes. Uh, it's in my introduction. Okay. Thank you. Um, so hello everyone, and I want to say you welcome to the first Blender training here at EuroPython. I hope it's not the last one. And my name is Federico Frenguelli, and I am mainly a Python software developer, like many of you here. And I work in. Oh, sorry. I, uh, I work, this is my Twitter account, uh, I work in Italy for a little startup named Evanoe and but today uh, I will be your Blender trainer of course. Oh and by the way I am also the maintainer of uh, this package so if you know what Django is, if you know what OAuth is, we are going to sprint in the end of the week so you can join us and help us. Thank you. And uh, why, why this training? Uh, you may ask why. And the short answer is because Blender is cool and you, you must know what Blender is. You must try it. But I think, guys, you deserve a longer answer. So uh, here is my story. I started using Blender. It was uh, three years ago while working on uh, my thesis on WebGL. And I strongly needed uh, an easy 3D modeling software because uh, I, I was stuck with the creation of a 3D, 3D world for my project and time was running out. Uh, so I googled for 3D open source and Blender was the first result. And you know, I started, re oh, sorry. <laughs> I started reading docs and watching video tutorials and in two weeks, I was able to easily draw all the models for my project. So, uh, as I told you, uh, Blender is really cool and you have to try it. Um, the plan, what we are going to see today. So, first of all, I will give you a briefly introduction on what is Blender. It's history, of course, and uh, we're going to see a preview of the feature. Uh, next, we're going through the user interface, uh, which is the most scary thing in Blender, usually. And uh, so how you can customize the user interface so that it fits your need. And then the modeling basics, so how to create your own meshes, and then we are going to talk about rendering, animation, but only the very basic stuff. Some Python scripting, because we're all Python developers and we love Python. And the last thing is the, one of the most appreciated features, which is the physics simulation engine in Blender. But what we are not going to see today, uh, the Blender internal rendering engine uh, which is the oldest one? Uh, we are going to. We will see what the, the what is a rendering engine in a few minutes. The Blender game, game engine, advanced animation stuff and motion tracking and so VFX uh, and so on. Um, this training uh, this training goal is to give you the basic knowledge of Blender so that you can go home and, you know, uh, study Blender for yourself, improve your skills. And this is my first training, so please be kind. This is my first training in English. And if you don't understand or if you get stuck uh, 
or you think I'm missing something, please don't uh, hesitate to ask me. Thank you. So, uh, first, before I start, you need the training resources. I think... I, I to interrupt you a moment. Yeah. If you ever to ma uh, ever make a question to him, uh, please raise your hand. He will tell me to bring your mic because we are going streaming. So otherwise, the uh, people outside this room will only listen okay. to his voice. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And there are USB drives around, okay? If you need the resources, you can grab from uh, everything from the USB drive, or you can download it uh, from the first URL. And the second one is to download the Blender version. Next. So, what is Blender? And Blender is a 3D and 2D content creation software. Uh, in one software, you, you have a lot of tools that allow you to produce Oh, sorry. Yeah, standing static 3D art like this island. Oh, this photo, this is a uh, uh, Blender rendering. Uh, it's quite impressive. Or, oh God, it's really small. <laughs> yes, of course, it's not working. It was yesterday. Do you need internet connection? To make it no, no, I, uh, it's a local file. Oh. Anyway, with Blender you can make animation, of course, <laughs> and also some video games if you know how to use the Blender game engine. And but before we start, I want to tell you some uh, the Blender history. And oh, sorry. Uh, So, Blender development begins in 1995, and the author is Don Rosendahl. He was working for an animation studio, and they needed an internal modeling tool. So he started to work on a piece of software that later will, late, later will become Blender. In 1998, uh, Don uh, founded, uh, not a number, a legal company, which uh, with the revolutionary goal to distribute Blender as, uh, um, as free software and sell support and services built around uh, Blender. In 2002, Blender already has a lot of fans. However, uh, not a number is not doing well due to low sales and is shut down by the investors. And the project is likely to die so, uh, who is going to save it? Of course, behind every uh, good open source project, there is a foundation. So, Blender, uh, sorry, Tom Rosendahl founded the nonprofit organization, the Blender Foundation, which, and their first goal is to find money to save, uh, to save Blender. Uh, in July 2002, uh, the free Blender campaign starts and it aims to raise uh, uh, 100,000 euros to buy back the rights from the, from the investors. And the next step is to release Blender to the open source community. And the goal is reached in only seven weeks, huh? thanks to the big community. And on October 14, 2002, Blender is released under the terms of GPL. So, uh, as you can imagine, the, the community has been very important for Blender uh, since the beginning. Uh, and still it is. Uh, uh, Blender counts more than a million users uh, among uh, hobbyists, students, and professionists, artists. And every day they produce a lot of resources uh, like, you know, blog articles, video tutorials, and model files, for example, that you can download and use it in your, 
in your projects. And if you look, uh, if you have the resources, the material, the training material, uh, among the files, you can find a file named link, which of course contain links. Uh, and there are some community links, very interesting community links inside the file. Does everyone have the resources, the training resources? No. Okay. Where are the USB drive? Can you put up the link once more? Yes, okay. Okay, of course, of course. The link is the the first one, this one. Sorry? Okay. Can you see it? Tell me when you when you're done. Okay. Thank you. The wireless LAN password for you? Uh, Python yeah. 2013. Python 2013. So. Okay. I have the word. I just wanted to have it. That's also capable. Oh, here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to do it. Right? Yeah. It's not working for me. That's what I'm trying to get. Try this one. Did you do you have um, yeah. you got the link? Is, is this the one? Uh, not zero. Yes, I know. Oh. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's B. Oh, yeah. Just B. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Fine. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, post. Okay, uh, can you go on? So every year uh, they organize the Blender conference where in Amsterdam. So uh, this year, if you want more information, follow the link. And if you're interested, you can go. It's a great conference. And uh, yes, Blender uh, Foundation uh, organize the, reali the realization of uh, projects uh, to validate and improve the content uh, creation with Blender. And these are called uh, open projects. So just a fast roundup of uh, which they are. The first one is uh, Elephant's Dream and it's a, it's a short movie. Uh, this is the second one and it is, I think this is the most famous one. Uh, Big Buck Bunny is also a short movie again. In the same year, 2008, they released a video game as a, most an experiment, uh, Yo Frank. And then we have another short movie, uh, Sintel. Uh, I think it was 2010. And the last year, uh, the first uh, uh, the first movie with real actors and uh, that make use of uh, the VFX capabilities of uh, Blender. Uh, Tears of Steel, 
this one is really, really cool. So if you uh, just go to the website and download the Download the movie and watch it because it's really, really nice. And I want to give you, before we start, uh, a fast, very, very fast feature preview. So, uh, mesh, mesh primitives, like every 3D modeling tool, uh, you need, uh, of course, you need mesh primitive that you can use as a base to build more more complex objects. So you have the cube, the cone, cylinder, sphere, torus, and isosurfaces. And you have this nice monkey head, which is called Suzanne. And then curves and surfaces. Uh, yes, it, they, uh, I think we are not going to use uh, curves and surfaces uh, today. And this kind of object are expressed by a mathematical function is uh, rather than a series of points. And you need, of course, materials to control the, the appearance of your object. These are examples of uh, very back materials like, for example, glass, uh, reflective and translucent materials, emission materials, which is uh, light, of course. Uh, this the, the, this one is a very strange one. It's called velvet ma uh, material surface, uh, and you can use it uh, for th mm, stuff such as clothes, for example. And then you have uh, transparent uh, material. And also, uh, something very interesting in Blender are modifiers. And the best definition uh, of modifiers uh, is the one from the official Blender uh, documentation. Uh, modifiers are automatic operations that affect an object in a non-destructive way. I don't know if you know the... Uh, you have ever worked with audio uh, stuff like, uh, for example, Pro Tools. You have real-time effect. You have your, your audio track. You apply a real-time effect, then you remove the effect and uh, the track. Uh, yes, as I told you, an undestructive way. It doesn't modify the shape, uh, the, 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 the real geometry. So this is an example, the sub, uh, subsurface modifier. And this one, for example, uh, it subdivides the, the faces of your mesh uh, and to give, to give the mesh a smoother appearance. And on the left side, we have Suzanne with no subsurface apl applied, uh, subsurface level one and subsurface level three. And you can see this is really, really nice. These are other kinds of modifier. And this creates an array of copies of the of the base object. Uh, here I made a uh, colonnade in and spiral staircase, for example, uh, in a few a few minutes, no, or maybe just a few seconds. And the last and most interesting feature in Blender, as I told you at the beginning, is it's integrated physics simulation engine and I want to show you just a, a couple of video. Yes, it works. Yes, yes, yes. And I mean uh, five minutes to to make that simulation. Uh, oh god. I hate reveal. Pretty cool. So, I'm talking too much. I know you want to put your hands on Blender. So, um, just start Blender. We can start the training now. Tell me when you have Blender 
working we're using blender 2.67b but 2.67 uh, works that's still okay I think possiamo spegnere le luci So, the user interface may be, thank you, it's okay? Okay, much better, much better. Off or on? Off. Off, okay. So, Blender user interface may be, may be really scary at first, huh? but don't worry, it's really, really simple. And first concept, Blender user interface is organized in uh, non-overlapping windows. And I have to go back to slides, because, oh, first, the golden rule. One hand on the keyboard and one hand on your mouse. That's the setup. Uh, as I told you, non-overlapping windows. Uh, okay. This picture shows you uh, which are the base components that you can find in the default Blender user interface. So uh, the the orange border. I know you you can't see which one is the orange uh, border. <laughs> anyway, this one. Uh, Highlights yes, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and that one on the top. Uh, the orange borders highlights the editors, and each editor has uh, its own header. The header is this part of the editor. You have one header here, one for each of the editors. One here, one here, and one here on the top. And yes, they're marked with a red field, but I know a red field. Uh. Anyway. So, uh, editors. Yes. Um, can you wait a moment? Yes. You have a different setup. Yes. Did you save the default file? Uh, yes. Oh, nice. So I think you can. Hmm. What can you see here on the layout switcher? Uh, default? Uh, OK, here? Ah, uh, here? Yes, switch back to default. Uh, ah, OK. Fine. <laughs> yes. Maybe you don't have the cube, yeah, but you can add it yeah. quickly. Um, so, the editors, uh, the headers, and you can easily resize the editor if you grab borders. And you can also split the editors if you grab the handles on the uh, top right and bottom left corners. So, just for example, for instance, just grab it and move it left or you can grab it and move it down and then to merge two editors together you grab one handle and move towards the other editor so like that 
merge again. So mm, I want to show you how you can really easily customize the appearance, the default appearance of Blender. And uh, I encourage you to, to play with these controls for just a while. Where is my mouse? Oh, okay. Yeah? Okay, I'll show you again. <laughs> you can uh, grab, can you see the handle on, yeah. the, on the top right? Yeah. There is also a handle on the bottom left uh, corner. Uh, you can find handles on each, each panel, each editor or view. So you can also split this one and again then to merge the editors together you grab the handle and move toward the other editor grab it and move and they merge again <laughs> it's not working Let me see, let me see. Uh, I'm not sure, have you tried this? Do you have tried or do you know how to solve this issue? Yeah, so, okay. okay. So, then let's give the new ones. So. Uh, click on it. Yeah, and then? Move. Okay. Uh, oh, that's one, and the others, how get I read this? Yeah. Uh, I just first. Yeah, first you have to merge the little, <laughs> this one. Okay, if you mess up the user interface, uh, just press Ctrl N to reload the default scene, okay? So, for example, for instance, ah, okay. if you mess up your UI, like that, okay, <laughs> press Ctrl N to reload the startup file. So you can safely play with the user interface because you can reload at any time. Control N. Tell me where can I, I can I go? I can I go? Fine. So, um, the window types, uh, as I told you, you have these kind of panels and which are always uh, the same and there are, you can, you can uh, in each panel, you can, you can switch the window type of the panel uh, using this with the switch you can find you find on the left of the header so for example there are a lot of window types as you can see we're only going to see uh, a few of them uh, during this training just for example uh, the main area is called uh, 3d view but i can activate the 3d view also on another another uh, panel or another window and once you switch back to properties and what are what are the the main uh, uh, window types that we can find in the default blender user interface uh, okay on the top you find the uh, info type, uh, the info window, uh, which is comprised solely of 
uh, a header, as you can see. Then you have uh, the large 3D window, which is called 3D view, and is the most important one in Blender, of course. Here is, uh, oh, at the bottom you have the timeline, really useful for animation. And the outliner, this one is called the outliner. Uh, it just shows you the uh, hierarchy of the objects in your scene. And then you have the properties uh, window uh, at the bottom right. Uh, of course, we are going to focus on the 3D window, which is the most used. Uh, but first, uh, I want you to open from the file menu the Blender preferences. You have the Blender preferences opened in front of you. So here you can customize almost every aspect of Blender. Uh, and now go to the, to the input tab, because uh, we need, maybe we need to act, you need to activate some options. So if you don't have a three button mouse, please activate, just check, emulate three button mouse. Because uh, in Blender, is, um, you, you're going to need the middle mouse button. And if you don't have the three mouse button, uh, activating this option uh, allows you to use Alt and left mouse click to emulate middle, middle mouse button. And also, the most important one, uh, unfor unfortunately, Numpad is very, very important uh, if you are a Blender user. Because uh, Numpad makes your life easier, allows you to navigate easily in the 3D scene. So, if you have Numpad, you are a lucky guy. But if you don't have Numpad, activate emulate uh, Numpad. So, you can use uh, the standard number keys uh, as numpad keys. But, yeah, I have a USB numpad keyboard, so the first one that raises his hand, <laughs> we get. So come on, who, who wants the numpad? Fine. When you go to the user preference. Yeah. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. The microphone. microphone. It dies completely. The process is fine. The process is fine. Oh. The oh. microphone is still here. Oh. Oh. This is. Uh, okay, I'll check it. But. <laughs> Um, can you start Blender from the command line? So we m maybe we can see some okay. output. Okay. You want to save the settings as a default? No, and it's, it's if, I, if I, now I want this numpad option, and then I don't want it because I have one of those settings. Uh, can I turn it on and off during one session? Is this option? Does it work? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. That's, that's, then all these numbers are taken, yeah? See, it's the usual numbers. Not the, it's not the numpad which is integrated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay. Good. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you can use this number <laughs> yeah, as numpad sure, keys. But blue numbers, so no, 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 no. Uh, okay. 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 Okay.
No, ok, come hanno detto. Non saprei. Ok, viene uno che è specialistico, se mai ci danno occhiate lui. Ok. Grazie comunque, scusa l'interruzione. No, prego. Yeah. So as I told you, uh, emulate three button mouse and emulate numpad if you don't have a three button mouse and uh, numpad of course. And you can also save uh, this selection as a default sure. configuration for your settings. And So we can start with the very basic stuff, uh, which is navigation, of course. How to navigate the scene. Oops. Just press Ctrl N so you, so you reload the default scene. So I know, I'm sure you, we all have the same uh, setup. And the first thing we have to see is how to move in the, in the 3D world. Uh, so, basic stuff like rotation. You can rotate the scene. Uh, with your middle mouse button and oh wait a second yes now you you can see the key the key I pressed and the the mouse action on the on the bottom left corner of the 3D viewport so middle mouse button to rotate the uh, the 3D view and you can also you can also use uh, numpad keys to navigate the views so with numpad 4 you rotate right numpad 6 to rotate left and numpad 8 to rotate toward the top rotate down with numpad 2 oh okay So next, uh, yes, with shift middle mouse button, uh, you can pan the view. You can move left, up, down. And then, as you see, with mouse wheel, of course, you can, you can zoom in and zoom out. And if you, you can always control the user interface with your keyboard. So as uh, for rotation, uh, if you press shift, numpad 8, oh, no, control, numpad 8, control, numpad 2, and 4 and 6, you can move up, down, you can pan up, yeah, down, left. Is this, is this an emulation of the, of the little mouse button on the right? Yeah. I show you again. Uh, oh, on Mac you have to press option, yeah. Okay.
Thank you. <laughs> so recap, uh, rotate with middle mouse button, uh, pan, uh, with shift, middle mouse button, and zoom with your mouse wheel. Or you can use also minus, numpad minus, and numpad plus to zoom in and zoom out. And we have, in Blender, we have fast views that allow us to, to, to move easily uh, because while you are modeling, most of the time you need to look at your object from a specific point of view. And maybe it's front, top, or side views. And there are shortcuts to that allows you to do this. So I always reload the startup file. And uh, for example, numpad 1 is the front view. Numpad 3 is your right, your side view. And numpad 7, the top view. If you press Control and uh, numpad 1, numpad uh, 3 and 7, you get the upside view. So uh, back, left, and bottom. OK. And also, as uh, very important, numpad 5, which al allows you to switch between perspective view and orthographic view. And the old perspective view, of course, is like in the real world. And the orthographic view is uh, really, really useful while you're modeling. Uh, yes, it's really, really handy because it allows you to be more precise. And next, uh, uh, object selection, of course. Uh, uh, we, and you can select object uh, with your left with your right mouse button sorry so yes this is the very basic stuff uh, for uh, navigating the U UI and so for the next few minutes please practice and play with the user interface and the recap so navigation, middle mouse button, shift, middle mouse button, mouse wheel. <laughs> These are some shortcuts for the fast views. Yes? Uh, can you bring in the microphone? Okay. Uh, what's the cross aim for? The left button seems to move a cross aim in, inside the interface. What's it for? The. Sorry, I. This one? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we see this is called the 3D cursor. Uh, and uh, actually, just for now, don't care about it. OK, we'll see what it, what it is used for later. Well, I can say it's, uh, yeah, I mean it's used as uh, the starting point when you add a new object. The object will be inserted where the 3D cursor is located. And it can be used as pivot point during transformation. For example, when you rotate the object, the pivot point for the rotation can be the 3D cursor. These are just examples, yes. If you, if you click with left mouse button, you're going to move uh, the 3D cursor. Don't care, that's not a problem. Uh, if you want to reset, 3D cursor at the center of the scene, just press, press Shift C and it goes back to the origin. 
Okay. So, as I told you, practice just a few minutes with the UI. These are the shortcuts. Tell me when you feel comfortable with, with it. If you need help. Is it working? I think. So. <laughs> I think. Yes. Okay. No, no, you can save just a few. Oh, okay. Yes, I really. No, this part is a little bit boring, but you really need to know how to easily move uh, in the 3D scene because uh, it's really important for modeling. So, uh, yes? Oh, the microphone. Hello. I don't have the numpad, so I have emulated the numpad. So what we should use for center and zoom for numpad center? What's is it? Dot is it? Oh, this one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not the. Uh, hmm. I have to check it. it Wait one. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you can use um, in Blender when you when you when you don't find a command when you don't remember the shortcut, for example. Uh, inside the 3D viewport, you can press uh, space, uh, and it will prompt you. And here you can search for everything. So, for example, center, center view to cursor. Then press enter to launch the action. And if you see, center view to course. Yes, it always uh, also shows you which is the uh, the the keyboard shortcut. So space to find for commands and actions. You're welcome. Can I go on? Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, fine. And before we we go through modeling, where is my presentation? Yeah. Uh, the vital function, quick rendering, because uh, you know how to make uh, uh, a render. So what is rendering? Uh, rendering is the process of generating an image from a model. Uh, what, what happens, um, there is a piece of software uh, that, is, that we call the rendering engine and that use all the information on the scene, like, I mean, uh, lights, materials, uh, texture, uh, shapes, uh, to compute the final image. In Blender, we have two rendering 
engine. Uh, one is the Blender internal engine, and then we have Cycles. And the Blender internal is the older one. Uh, and we are not going to use it during this training. We are going to use Cycles, which, is, which was introduced in Blender 2.61. And it aims to be a photorealistic uh, rendering engine. Uh, in my opinion, Cycles is really easier to, to understand and you can have better results with little efforts. So, first of all, you have to, to switch rendering engine in Blender. Oh, God. Okay. Because maybe um, in the default uh, Blender setup, you, you have Blender internal rendering engine. Uh, on the info window header, you can find this switcher. Yeah. This drop down menu. And just select Cycles Render. Okay? Yes. Oh, this is. So, how to render? Just press F12. Uh, this is the result. Pretty ugly. Awful. Is it correct? Do you see this image? Can you see this image? Yeah. Not sure? Sorry? I, I had not to press F12, just changed immediately after I selected this. I guess no. Like this. Yeah. It's just correct, or? Yes, just press F12. Oh, That's you it. have no camera. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, because you have a very, really different setup from the default setup. Yeah? yeah. How can I get the default setup? <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to delete to get the default setup? No, you have to... Here. I, I know that Can I you have a blend file somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Find it. uh, it's not, it's not, I just look. I, I, I think I found it. Oh, you can use the Blender version, which is inside the, the pen drive. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, I have it. Uh, okay. So um, let's take, to go back to the 3D view port, press F11, okay? Now let's take a look at the default scene. You have the, the cube, then we have a lamp, because you always need a light or your, your image, your rendering will be black, of course. And there is uh, the camera and the... Uh, which is the viewpoint of the of the rendering of the render and uh, to go if you if, if you want to look at your scene at, at your scene from the uh, camera viewpoint you can press uh, numpad 0 and it's really useful cuz yeah, you have a preview of your scene. Is okay? Oh, fine. F11 doesn't work? Okay, same for, okay, so. You can you can also Okay, let me see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can 
you can still uh, rendering the image because uh, here in the, now I show how to render the image okay. from the property panel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just doing this one. Okay. Yes, because you you. I just have pressed control F12. No. Okay. Control F12 is. Uh, uh, um, the shortcut that renders the animation. Yeah. So now uh, it is. How do I get the Ask? Escape? Yes. Uh, now? Escape. How do you know my rendering? Yeah, you can. Here on the property panel, yes, the render. You can click okay. the render button. Yes, yeah, here on the, this one. Fine. Just hover over. Yeah, the shortcut is F12. I am. F12. I, I know, I know, I know. You are in this room, yeah. I don't know if it's just. I haven't changed it. The, the, the German Mac, so I might be fitting. When I, I, I did something with this function, because if I use function, I turned, I use this one. I use sound on and off. Yeah. Okay. But if I use a function one, but if I don't use a function one, I have normal F12. But the F12 obviously is set to something else. Yeah, of course. But I can always click, click this button. Yeah. You can okay. You you, you can also um, change the shortcut for the for to needed to render. So if you want, I can show I you. Like Control Shift R or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, for example, Control Alt F12, and uh, yes. Um, if I just add the camera, is it the same? If yeah. I just add the camera, maybe. Yeah. It's only a camera there. Yes. Okay. And then. Uh, just press Control Zero, so I can. Oh yeah, you have to switch to cycles. Yes, cycles. Okay. Cycles then now. Okay. Then this is that. that the shape has changed by this already. So if Can you press a zero? Zero. Yeah. Now you are into the camera. Ah, okay. But the camera uh, orient orientation is wrong, as you can okay. see. Yeah. You have to change the rotation and the position of the camera. So. Ah, how can I do this? Ah, going back. Ah, I have yeah. to move it. Ah, no. How can I do you know the basic transformation in Blender? How to no. do? No. Okay, we, we're going to see how to. I have another question. I, I don't have the frame anymore. Uh, I cannot get out in here. It's like a full screen thing. How do I get out of this full screen? You see, I, I know there's no way to make a short. Wait. Thing. There's no button. There's no menu outside. Anymore. Window. Window. Yeah. Uh, toggle full screen. Alt F11. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you need some help? No, okay, fine. I uh, can go. So just I wanted to point out when you when you go to reset, you're you're losing your. Uh, it's going back to yes. Back. Okay, I'll show you how to save uh, the full setup. Uh, so. So if you reload your setup file, maybe you're losing the renderer, the rendering engine settings on the top. To save it, just uh, save startup file after you have changed the rendering engine up there. So switch to cycles and then save startup file or control U. And then press Control N to check if it worked. Okay. Oh, one thing if you inside the resources folder the training uh, resources, you can find this really, really nice uh, PDF. Yes, the cheat sheet. And uh, here you can, you have a lot of interesting stuff. Yes, it's for Blender 2.5, but uh, it still works on Blender 2.6. There are a lot of useful shortcuts okay there are too too many for the training but uh, if you don't remember a shortcut you can use this 
cheat sheet to look for. Okay. Uh, okay. Fine, we can go, we can start with the funny part, I hope. Modeling. So, uh, let's see, let's see how, how you can interact with, with, uh, with objects in, uh, in Blender. And, sorry. Okay, so selection, as I told you, is a uh, right mouse button. If you want to add object to the selection, you can use shift and click with your right mouse button. And as you can see on your laptop, uh, the object you, are, you add are marked with a uh, orange border, okay? And if you want to select all the object in the scene, just press A, but A actually uh, toggle, toggles selection. So press A to select, and A again to deselect all object in, uh, in the scene. And uh, then, transformation. I need to spend a few words on the coordinate system used in the in the 3D view uh, on the bottom left uh, you have the actual setup of the coordinate system so the green the green axis is the y axis the, the y axis yes the um, the red the red one is the x and the blue one is z axis of course and every object lies inside the this coordinate system and that's fine now uh, what if we want to move an object around uh, just press select the object and press G on your keyboard so G as grab now you are in grab mode and you can move the object around and you can confirm the transformation when pressing left mouse button or while moving, moving you can cancel uh, transformation with your right mouse button nice and to better control this transformation, um, for example, for instance, what if you want to move the object only along the x axis, for example? Uh, just select the object. Oh, sorry, uh, one, I will reload the, the full scene. Just press G, and then while you are in grab mode, press X on your keyboard and as you can see now you can move the cube only along the X axis and it's the same for the, the other axis so you can press Y to move along the Y axis you can press Z to move along the blue one okay and one more step uh, you can better control the transformation if <coughs> while you are in grab mode if you press control you can move the object at uh, stepped values it will snap at grid increments what are grid increments I show you uh, I, if you switch to orthographic view and then 
for example, front uh, on uh, top view, can you see this square? I know you, you, you don't see the square here, but on your laptop, can you see the grid square? Those are, uh, each square is one blender, blender unit. We call blender unit, which are not meters or uh, just numbers, but. So as I told you, if you, if I grab the cube, then press X, and I keep press control, it will snap at grid increments. And this is really nice. That way you can easily control uh, transformation of your objects. Fine. And while you are well, while you are in grab mode, you can see values changing at the bottom of the of the 3D view, and these are uh, the delta values of the transformation. So, for example, if you have the cube and you grab it along the x axis you can see it increase one by one okay question. yeah is there an indicator in which mode I'm currently in. Uh, Grab mode, view mode. Do I, do I see that or do I have to guess it? No. Uh, yes. Actually, there is no indicator. I mean, when you are in grab mode and you move your mouse, the, the object moves, uh, follows your mouse. And if you are in rotate mode, the object rotate and if you are in scale mode now, now we're going to see the other transformation uh, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm showing you how to use blender through mouse and keyboard but you can also uh, apply transformation using uh, your mouse for example uh, if you see these arrows these are handles for that allows you to uh, to move the object, uh, um, yes, allows you to do the same thing that you do while when you press G and you go on uh, grab mode. So if you uh, left click on one of these angles, it will begin to transform the object along the corresponding axis. Or if you click inside this white circle, oh, but there is no really indicator of the transformation. And oh, I need to start screencast so you can see what case. I'm going to press. Yeah. yeah, that way you can see what I'm going to press. So G to grab, X, Y, and Z during the grab mode to lock transformation, and control to transform uh, at stepped values. And now we can see the other kind of transformations. Uh, which are rotate, just press R, and 
of course, you can press X to rotate around the X axis or Y to rotate around the, to lock the transformation to a specific axis. And also, you can press control and rotate to rotate at step and values. And the last transformation is scale. Oh no, X, just. Just press S to scale the object and you can lock uh, to the X or to Y to scale along the Y axis or to Z. And as for the other transformation, you can press control to transform a step of values. Is it clear? Okay. And uh, one more thing. Why during transformation you can, for example, just I want to scale the object along the x axis. So I can scale it with my mouse, but for example, I want it to scale. Uh, if if you if you know the value, can you see the value on the lower left? Uh, it's one point one two five nine. But I want to scale it to, for example, three point five. Uh, while you are in uh, scale mode, just start typing the number. So three point five and the value will override the current value of the transformation. Then press enter, and the transformation applies. Do you get it? Fine. So, I think we uh, recap. Transformation G, oh, G to grab, R to rotate, and S to scale. Uh, during the transformation, you can activate transformation constraint with X, Y, and Z, and you can write the current value. If you start typing numbers during uh, the transformation, and apply with uh, or left mouse button or just by uh, pressing Enter key. Uh, one more thing: uh, how to add other objects to the scene? Just press shift, yes? Excuse me, I think it's good to know that you can uh, press up if there are more than one axis you want to adjust the object. For example, if you press G. Yeah. Um, for example, if you press G uh, to grab the object, there are three axes, you can move it along. And if you wanted to do by keyboard, you can press tab to go to the next axis. So oh, uh, you can fine. Enter or, uh, move all three axes with the uh, uh, keyboard. You say grab X. And now you can say, uh, for example, 20, tap 20, tap 20, and it will move 20 in all oh, yeah, directions. Well, yeah. You say you mean grab, and then 20, tap 20, yes. tap 20. Yes. That's fine. What Thank you. Thank you. Sorry? Everybody understand what the guy said? 
I, I repeat what you said, yeah. So, oh, where's the cube? Oh, when you have the cube, uh, you are in grab mode, uh, and you type values. You have to control the values for all the three axes. So, if you start typing 20, uh, sets the value 20 just for the x axis. So, to go to the next one, to y, just press tab, and you can set the value for the y axis. Yeah, the next one to go to the z tab again to go to z axis, and then type the value, press enter. Thank you. And uh, yes, to to add object to the scene while you are uh, with your mouse in the 3D viewport, just press Shift A, and you can see this menu where you can add. Uh, there are a lot of stuff here, but we are going to focus only on the first menu item, mesh. Uh, here you find all the mesh primitives we have seen in the introduction, uh, like plane, cube, circle, UV, sphere, uh, icosphere, yeah, cylinder, cone. So just click on the object you want to add. For example, a sphere, grab it, move along the z-axis, uh, so on. And that way you can add object to your scene. Of course, to remove the object from the scene, uh, select the object and press X. X. I'll ask you to confirm the delay. And here we are. And you can also duplicate object. You can select uh, the object and press Shift D, and it will duplicate the selected object. So Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. Fine. Yes. Shift A. Shift A to add the object, X to delete the object, and Shift D to duplicate the object. Okay, fine. And uh, uh, one more tip: when you when you when you select an object. Uh, a small orange circle appears at the center of the object. Uh, that is the, the origin point. It is called the origin point. And the location of this point determines uh, where the object is located in the 3D space. OK? It is very important. Uh, and it, it is also important when rotating or scaling, because uh, um, it is used as the default pivot point for the transformation. So, the origin. And if you press N on the 3D viewport, you'll see on the right, uh, this is called the property panel. And you can look at the current transformation values for the selected object, yes? Yeah? If you press N, N to toggle the property panel. Here, the in, in the transformation section, you can see uh, the current transformation values for the selected object. And you can also control these values from here. Just for example, I want to move this, this sphere at 1, 1, 1. So it's easy 
Yes, you can scale it. Yes. I, I think it's easier, it's easier to use keyboard. But if you want better control or finer control, you can use uh, the property panel to uh, set location or rotation or scale, for example. Okay. This is just a recap. So the first exercise today is to model a Lego brick, because the you know the building block, the, the building blocks of our childhood, and you can model a Lego brick using just the basic shapes and uh, yeah you this is the reference image I encourage you to always use a reference image while modeling and uh, remember that it's, it's, it's a matter of shapes so analyze the reference image and try to identify which are the the basic shapes that makes they make up the brick and then use that shape to realize the 3d uh, model so uh, five minutes just go no no the lo no the logo the logo no If you need my help, I'm here. How do you save files? I want a great file and save it to file. Sorry? I, when I open it, I get this one. I want an empty file, and then I want to save it in the file. I did, didn't talk about it. If I say new file, I get this thing. Yes. OK, just delete. Uh, you can use all. Yes, because the default file has, has the key. Uh, when I click, I get this one. What's this? Always when I click, I get this thing. This, this, this. Yes, this is the this is called 3D cursor. Yeah. And but it, it's uh, you can move 3D cursors if you click with your uh, left mouse button. Uh, it is used as the entry point for the new yeah. objects. So to to reset the 3D cursor, you can press Shift C. Shift C. Yeah. And 3D cursor moves to the Center. Okay. Of the, okay. Origin point zero zero zero. And I delete. I have to say. X to delete the selected object. Yes. Delete. Fine. So now I have to add more objects. And then yeah. I, and then I, uh, but I want to save the file first. I can say save. Yeah. As. You have a save startup file. No, not the startup file. I want to save the scene. Not the the scene. Part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Of so course. course I wanna How are you? Yeah, I, I, I found this. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I have seen how you have uh, made a quarter to some longish thing, but I've missed, I forget. Uh, uh, how, you yeah. Now I have the quarter and so on, but how? Oh. If, you, if you get stuck, just ask me. So, yes. to, to, uh, you want to scale the object? Yeah, scale yeah. Okay. S, S. Ah, S. Okay. S, yes. Ah, okay. Ah. Oh, wait. Yeah, but that's not symmetric. Asymmetric. Asymmetric. Yeah. Not, uh, just you want, uh, for example, you can press X yeah. to. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That that's way, it. the object scale only along the yeah. axis. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> that's it. Okay. And it's the same for the other axis. You yeah, can press sure X, it's Y, it's and Z. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, shift D to duplicate the object, yes. And I need uh, the slope so I can use E sphere. Oh, it's not a sphere. Cylinder, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, now you. Uh, 
You, you, you don't have to use arrays yeah, for the yeah, exercise, yeah, it's okay? Remember you mentioned Just, uh, rem yes, the tip is just use Shift D to duplicate objects, okay? And also, uh, while modeling, try to use uh, the fast view, the fast views and the, orthograph the orthographic view to model the Lego brick. Oh. <laughs> to the back? Huh? Yeah, ah, so retardo. I'm late. We, have, we, we have a lot we have of things to do. Okay. Oh, fine. Do you want a mouse? Uh, yeah, huh? but we, we just don't have our battery ran okay, out. Okay, uh, what kind of battery? Uh, double A. Double A. Yeah, oh. it's uh, like this kind. <laughs> See. Because maybe I have... Um, yes, because it's, it's really hard to model with, with yeah. the touchpad, yes. I'm going to ask how many batteries, uh, what kind? One, AA. One AA, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I can ask you for a mouse in case we don't have it. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no it's okay. <laughs> Fine. If you need... Yeah. So I get when I get in the shapes and the place, but is there any way to have it when I'm trying to move so that it knows when I'm trying when I'm trying to move this so that it's actually because in a lot of vector stuff you can see when it's matching up and similar axes. Is there a mode to enable that? Uh, wait, wait, one moment. Uh, just repeat your question Sorry. slower. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when I'm doing uh, stuff in vector drawing. If I move something around and it meets and it's going across another's a another object's axis, it will let me know I'm going across another object's axis, so I can line everything up. Just show me it on. So, so if you're moving like this, when it's the origin points are on the same axis, yeah, is there a way to do that? Yes, but don't care. Okay. No, okay. Okay. It, it's it's too early. Okay. Just. Uh, just try to model some, some the shape. Yeah. Okay. It's um, this first the first exercise. Uh, uh, it's useful because yeah. um, you need to uh, to to practice with yeah. the shortcuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And three yeah. D modeling concept. Yeah. Okay. okay. So if they are not perfectly aligned, that's not important. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sei barando. No. Sì. Yes. È possibile cambiare il raggio? Cioè, se io seleziono questi sì. con Shift tipo voglio farli un po' più aumentare il raggio se faccio S però si è possibile te lo posso dire ma è un concetto un po' più avanzato no assolutamente comunque è possibile anche cambiare il rispetto solo del singolo oggetto senza cambiare perché questo adesso è sbagliato, diciamo, per dovrà di farli tutti. Il, il trucco è il, 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 il pivot point della sì. trasformazione. Sì. Quindi se tu selezioni più object, ah, il pivot più point, point. È, lo calcola lui come il centro del bounding box sì, sì. della selezione. Fare. Ma potresti dirgli io voglio che... Il pivot point di ciascuno sia... Esatto, ciascuno. singolo. Ah, sì. Quindi a quel punto ti... C'è un'opzione. Yes? How can I uh, like position the camera better because like I want to make it I have this but I want to make it like you know this, this one. Oh. Well 
it's not important, but if uh, you can, um, the camera is an object, mm -hmm. you can use the same transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like, if I move it around, for example, like I'll grab it, it's like yeah. Yeah, not pointing anymore. Yeah, it's like, okay. Is there a way to make it easier? But, um, I showed you how to go into yeah. the camera, yes, yeah. zero, fine. Now you have the camera selected, you can yeah. see because uh, the orange border around so the camera. Now you can press G, for example, and move around. Okay. No, no, the, select the camera, yeah. press G, yes. Ah, okay, cool. Fine. And if you press uh, S, now oh, R to rotate, S, <laughs> no. No, the scaling is not working, yeah. There is a way to zoom the camera, but we'll see. Mm. Now we're okay. going to see how to to set up your camera. Hi. Yeah. Is there a way to make uh, object groups, you know, to group yes. them and apply uh, the information on the Okay, to make an object group, you can use Control G. This okay. creates a group, but uh, I'm not sure uh, this will help you. What, uh, what are you trying to to keep. I just um, thinking about um, I'm used to, to draw vectorial design. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and you group of objects of together. Yes. Uh, there is some kind of the, equivalent in uh, there is something like that, but um, now we are only yeah. using yeah. basic shapes. Yeah. Okay. So Later on the tutorial, <laughs> yeah, you you will see how to uh, how this object can can be one, a single shape. Uh, th this is a weird way to model, but I use the first <laughs> exercise uh, so you can practice okay. with basic uh, keyboard shortcuts. Quando credi si fa il track, se credi posso dare, se non ripassi la telecamera posso già dare ora l'avviso, come preferisci? Se loro hanno finito l'esercizio e vogliono andare, posso andare. Ah, no, ma anche per la trasmissione. Però se ripassi adesso prova la camera devi dire qualcosa, se no facciamo dopo come. Ok, allora sento se. Se vuoi anche ritardare un quarto d'ora nel tempo, chiaramente siamo così. Ctrl N possiamo ricaricarsi la vista. Ctrl N? Sì. Sì. Everything is gone. Oh yeah, everything is gone. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ok, don't, 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 no, it won't, it won't work. Yes, don't, don't press, don't press Ctrl N or your model will be lost. You have to, say, you have to save it first, first with Control S, you, so you can save the blend file. Uh, I'm sorry for, <laughs> for you. <laughs> also you? No, okay, fine. It happened to me very early on. Ah, okay. <laughs> on a very early stage, fine. And so, I think now there is the coffee break, but uh, if you if you want to stay here and continue modeling, you can. Uh, yeah, as you wish, as you wish. But uh, just one thing: save save your file. You press Control S to save the file, so you won't lose your work. Ok. Regia abbiamo chiuso, grazie. How long is the break? How long? 45 minutes. Are we going to use the full 45? Yeah? Are we going to use the full 45 minutes? Or can we uh, if, you, if you want, we can use uh, less, like 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Ok? 20 minutes of break. Fine. Thank you.